Um, our next company is called Trash Amps, and um, we have Adam here from Trash Amps, uh, included, in, including a little bit of props, so I'm excited to see what you have in store. Cool. So my name is Adam, I grew up here in the Bay Area, saw a lot of family, friends and things starting companies, and so I always thought, hey, maybe someday I'll start a company. Um, Um, I went to college at Cal Poly down in San Luis Obispo, uh, studied manufacturing engineering, so basically the study of how you make things, and one of my buddies was an electrical engineer, and he got a kit to turn an Altoids tin into a guitar amplifier. We have this house of six engineers, a bunch of us were um, musicians as well, playing the guitar, things like that and uh, thought this was a really cool idea and so when I graduated said hey maybe there's something here why don't we start a company what are we doing we're, we're taking trash and we're turning them into speakers so let's call it trash amps so that's kind of where the name came from like every great idea it started in the garage uh, some PVC pipe from Home Depot and uh, the Altoids tin didn't sound very good because it's such a small enclosure so we thought, you know, what about a beer can or a soda can? So that was kind of our first product idea. So here I am in the garage, got a bunch of cans and PVC pipe. It was crazy and slow and uh, not a very finished product. But eventually we um, raised some money and decided to make 500 of these, um, invested in injection molding and all that sort of stuff. And being in uh, manufacturing sort of had an idea of how to do those sorts of things. But the concept is uh, an insert which comes in and out of any soda can um, and then the battery speaker and cord are inside of here so you just pull that out and plug it into your phone or something like that um, so I'm, I'll let you hear it in a little while but, um, so we came out with this product we built 500 sold 500 then we said let's build a, a thousand more and this is all in our garage me and my one friend um, so we sold a thousand more, then we said, we're tired of building these by hand, 1,500, let's try contract manufacturing. So we did a batch of a thousand with a contract manufacturer, went through all the troubles and quality and communication and all that, and um, let's see here, they work great as guitar amps. Um, so anyway, uh, I tried to bring the theme of sustainability, which is core to our, our values, through to our packaging. So this was kind of a first concept and uh, strawberry container. And then eventually we went to a cardboard shipping tube. So the cool thing about this is you can ship it in this. You don't need like an external box. The customer can keep it as a travel case when they're done. And when they someday want to get rid of it, it's completely recyclable. So. Um, but the company is called Trash Amps, not Can Amps. So we're interested in taking all different sorts of objects and turning them into speakers. So um, that's just wanted to show you. I'm a collector of cans. So that's a wall in my house that has all these different soda and beer cans. Um, like I was saying, there's all different sorts of objects around us that could potentially be turned into speakers. And I've found that especially kids really seem to understand this. You saw them you show them a speaker in a soda can and they start to look around the room and say, hey, what about that coffee cup or what about like a Chinese takeout box? So the next product we developed was a mason jar speaker um, and it's really cool, it's simple, it's transparent uh, in the sense of the materials that we're using. Um, so I have a couple of those here today. Um, we have a laser wood engraver so we've started to get more into customization so you can put different patterns, um, you can engrave it with your name. Uh, we did a project with the Discovery Channel, so starting to grow and work with corporate clients to put their logos on it and give it out as a gift or a promotion for their brand. So uh, we worked with Pepsi to do a promo for Mountain Dew, CNN. And then Del Monte approached us there in San Francisco and they said, hey, we got these tin cans. Could you build a speaker that would fit inside of our tin cans? So I think you guys are getting the idea, but we're just trying to think of new uses for things you might normally throw away and build cool portable speakers. So let me plug it in and kind of show you the sound of these things. So it's just got a cord and uh, we, ha we are doing the production in Sunnyvale right now because um, we just have a lot of control over the quality and 
So one of the cool things about our product is that you can link them together. It gets louder and louder, so it starts with one idea and then you... So anyway, it's a pretty good sound. Um, let me show you guys the guitar demo. They automatically turn on and off, so you can't, a lot of kids would forget to turn theirs off. The original model had a switch, so we said, let's get rid of the switch. Um, and they all work as guitar amps, so hopefully I can do you justice here and play you something. So. I'll be here after if you want to come try it out. Um, anyway, we're, we're kind of trying some new educational routes too, so building kits where kids can put together their own speaker, and so combining like sustainability with engineering, with acoustics, and actually I found that like a lot of kits that are available, it's something that they're not really excited about or something that they want to share with their friends. So to have something that people are like, that a kid is excited about, goes and shows his friends, he can actually use it, uh, I think that's pretty exciting. So this is kind of a new kit that we're going to introduce in the next two weeks here at the Maker Fair in San Mateo. This was a collaboration we did with the Boy Scouts of America. So built 100 kits, got them sponsored, and handed them out at the National Boy Scout Jamboree. But again, just trying to get the kids really thinking along these lines with the hope that maybe someday they'll grow up to start their own um, companies and upcycling. Um, but anyway, the idea is that you can really turn anything into a speaker. And uh, we've done 3,000 soda cans, 2,000 mason jars, and we're building 5,000 more mason jars in the garage right now. So. Um, that's the end of my presentation. I brought a bunch of stuff, so if you want to come up, I'll be up here afterward. And I even bought some speakers. If you want to buy one, take one home. That's fine with me. So, thank you. Yes. Hi, Adam. Hi. Congratulations on the progress thus far, and really cool product. I like the sustainability concept and the way it could play into uh, a lot of marketing departments. I think that's great. Uh, quick question when it comes to the price, how are you selling these right now? And I mean, the actual price, how you're selling them, that kind of stuff. Good question. Yeah, um, there's kind of three, three avenues we're going with right now. We have our own website, um, so just trashamps.com. And we are planning to kind of invest in a new website that's really cool and more interactive, but that's one of our primary means of spreading our product. Um, the mason jars we've been selling for $65, and the soda cans we were selling for $50, and that seems to be a, a good price point, but it is kind of a fine line since our name is Trash Amps. People don't expect it to be too pricey, but if it's too low, then people start doubting the quality of the product. So um, We also work with Urban Outfitters, uh, Uncommon Goods, so other both retail and online merchants, and that seems to be a nice way to get our name out there. Um, and then the last sort of thing, which I mentioned, was just doing this corporate branding thing where a company comes to us, they want a cool gift that no one has, they don't want the cell phone recharger with their name on it, they want a cool portable speaker. Microsoft wants cool portable speakers with their, with their logo on it. So anyway, yeah. What do you do for batteries? Okay. Um, so this, actually both of our products have AAA batteries in them and they last about 20 hours uh, before you replace them. And right now we're working on a version with a rechargeable battery and also thinking about Bluetooth and solar. And uh, part of the reason we haven't um, gone with the rechargeability yet is because you have to get an FCC certification for anything that's going to plug into the wall. Um, so, which is about five, five to ten grand. So, we just want to make sure we know what our product is and how it works, and make sure it's what people really want before we make the investment to um, get that certification. Okay. I, I can repeat it. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you thought about other ways you can get leverage in the business 
model be a you know, software where you can teach kids how to play sort of on the guitar uh, and other applications that you can put around the hardware? Yeah, I think, um, what's that? Oh yeah, so, so your question is kind of how, how can we expand on this idea, maybe in the education space or just marketing in general, building the company? Or? Yeah, um, I think one of the things I'm excited about but we haven't had the bandwidth to do yet is to hold workshops or even sort of a create a workshop experience that could be brought to schools or Boy Scouts or after school clubs. Um, certainly I love working with kids and would love to just go out maybe once a week or whatever it is, but physically go to places, interact with the people get them building speakers, or if we had a space where people could come for workshops there and they could see our laser cutter and they could put their name on it, I just think the more they can see the entire process and how it works, the more excited people will be about it. So. All right, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Trash Hands. All right.